Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 12th Saturday after Pentecost, August 21, morning prayer. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. <clears throat> Amen. Alleluia. The Lord, to whom all things return, come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord, to whom all things return, come, let us adore him. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. I call with my whole heart. Answer me, O Lord, that I may keep your statutes. I call to you, O oh, that you would save me. I will keep your decrees. Early in the morning I cry out to you, for in your word is my trust. My eyes are open in the night watches, that I may meditate upon your promise. Hear my voice, O Lord, according to your loving kindness. According to your judgments, give me life. <clears throat> they draw near, who in malice persecute me. They are very far from your law. You, O Lord, are near at hand, and all your commandments are true. Long have I known from your decrees that you have established them forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. O God of my ancestors and Lord of mercy, who have made all things by your word and by your wisdom have formed humankind, to have dominion over the creatures you have made and rule the world in holiness and righteousness and pronounce judgment in uprightness of soul. Give me the wisdom that sits by your throne, and do not reject me from among your servants, for I am your servant, the son of your handmaid, a man who is weak and short-lived, with little understanding of judgment and laws. For even one who is perfect among human beings will be regarded as nothing, without the wisdom that comes from you. With you is wisdom, she who knows your works and was present when you made the world. She understands what is pleasing in your sight and what is right according to your commandments. Send her forth from the holy heavens and from the throne of your glory. Send her that she may labor at my side and that I may learn what is pleasing to you for she knows and understands all things, and she will guide me wisely in my actions and guard me with her glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me as you have said. 
Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. As the wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to the Lord. Sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is his name. Rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows. God in his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in dry places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the skies poured down rain. At the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel, you sent a gracious rain, O oh God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O oh God, you have made provision for the poor. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of women who bore the tidings. Kings with their armies are fleeing away. The women at home are dividing the spoils. Though you lingered among the sheepfolds, you shall be like a dove whose wings are covered with silver, whose feathers are like green gold when the Almighty scattered kings. It was like snow falling from Zalman. O mighty mountain, O hill of Bashan, O rugged mountain, O hill of Bashan, why do you look with envy, O rugged mountain, at the hill which God chose for his resting place? Truly the Lord will dwell there forever. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of thousands. The Lord comes in holiness from Sinai. You have gone up on high and led captivity captive. You have received gifts from your enemies that the Lord might dwell among them. Blessed be the Lord day by day, God of our salvation, who bears our burdens. He is our God, the God of our salvation. God is the Lord by whom we escape death. God shall crush the heads of his enemies and the hairy scalp of those who go on still in their wickedness. The Lord said, I will bring them back from Bashan. I will bring them back from the depths of the sea, that your foot may be dipped in blood, the tongues of your dogs in the blood of your enemies. They see your procession, O God, your procession into the sanctuary. My God and my King, the singers go before, mus musicians follow after. In the midst of maidens playing upon the hand drums, bless God in the congregation. Bless the Lord, you that are of the fountain of Israel. There is Benjamin, least of the tribes, at the head. The princes of Judah in a company. And the princes of Zebulon and Naphtali Send forth your strength, O God. Establish, O God, what you have wrought for us. Kings shall bring gifts to you. For your temple's wake sake at Jerusalem, rebuke the wild beasts of the reeds and the peoples, a herd of wild bulls with its calves. Trample down those who lust after silver. Scatter the peoples that delight in war. Let tribute be brought out of Egypt. Let Ethiopia stretch out her hands to God. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. 
His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places, the God of Israel giving strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me as you have said. A reading from the prophet Samuel. Now these are the last words of David, the oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man whom God exalted, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the favorite of the strong one of Israel. The spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His word is upon my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, one who rules over people justly, ruling in the fear of God, is like the light of morning, like the sun rising on a cloudless morning, gleaming from the rain on the grassy land. Is not my house like this with God? For he has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure. Will he not cause to prosper all my help and my desire? But the godless are all like thorns that are thrown away, for they cannot be picked up with the hand. To touch them, one uses an iron bar on the shaft of a spear, and they are entirely consumed in fire on the spot. These are the names of the warriors whom David had. Jeshob Bashebeth, a Taconite. He was chief of the three. He wielded his spear against 800 whom he killed at one time. Next to him among the three warriors was Eleazar, son of Dio of Ahohi. He was with David when they defiled the Philistines who were gathered there for battle. The Israelites withdrew, but he stood his ground. He struck down the Philistines until his army grew weary, though his hand clung to the sword. The Lord brought about a great victory that day. Then the people came back to him, but only to strip the dead. Next to him was Shammah, son of Aji, the Herahite. The Philistines gathered together at Lehi where there was a plot of ground full of lentils, and the army fled from the Philistines. But he took his hand in the middle of the plot, defended it, and killed the Philistines, and the Lord brought about a great victory. Towards the beginning of harvest, three of the thirty chiefs went down to join David at the cave of Adullam where a band of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Rephraim. David was then in the stronghold of the garrison of the Philistines, was then at Bethlehem. David said longingly, Oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem that is by the gate. Then the three warriors broke through the camp of the Philistines, drew water from the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate, and brought it to David. But he would not drink of it. He poured it out to the Lord, for he said, The Lord forbid that I should do this. Can I drink the blood of the men who went at the risk of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it. The three warriors did these things, saying, I have killed the Lord's anointed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God has been gracious to you, Mary. You will conceive and bear a son, and you shall give him the name Jesus. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you in the radiance of your holy name. 
We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. God has been gracious to you, Mary. You will conceive and bear a son, and you shall give him the name Jesus. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After several days had passed, King Agrippa and Bernice arrived at Caesarea to welcome Festus. They were staying there several days. Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a man here who was left in prison by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me about him and asked for a sentence against him. I told them that he was not the custom of the Romans. It was not the custom of the Romans to hand over anyone before the accused had met the accusers face to face and had been given an opportunity to make a defense against the charge. So when they met here, I lost no time, but on the next day took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought. When the accusers stood up, they did not charge him with any of the crimes that I was expecting. Instead, they had certain points of disagreement with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but whom Paul asserted to be alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate these questions, I asked whether he wished to go to Jerusalem and be tried there on these charges. But when Paul had appealed to be kept in custody for the decision of his imperial majesty, I ordered him to be held until I could send him to the emperor. Agrippa said to Festus, I would like to hear the man myself. Tomorrow, he said, you will hear him. So on the next day, Agrippa and Bernice came with great pomp, and they entered the audience hall with the military tribunes and the prominent men of the city. Then Festus gave the order, and Paul was brought in. And Festus said, King Agrippa and all here present with us, you see this man about whom the whole Jewish community petitioned me both in Jerusalem and here, shouting that he ought not to live any longer. But I found that he had done nothing deserving death. And when he appealed to his imperial majesty, I decided to send him. But I have nothing definite to write to our sovereign about him. Therefore, I have brought him before all of you, and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that after we have examined him, I may have something to write. For it seems to me unreasonable to send a prisoner without indicating the charges against him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are you, Mary, For the world's salvation came forth from you. Now in glory you rejoice forever with the Lord. Intercede for us with your Son. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear. 
holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In his tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Mary, for the world's salvation came forth from you. Now in glory you rejoice forever with the Lord. Intercede for us with your Son. A reading from a sermon in praise of the Virgin Mary by St. Bernard, Abbot Bishop. It was fitting that the Virgin should give birth only to God, and it was also fitting that God should be born only of the Virgin. Accordingly, the creator of humankind, in order that he might become a man, by being born of a human being, had to seek out from all humankind and designate as his mother a woman he knew would be worthy of him and pleasing to him. And so he chose a sinless virgin, that he might be born sinless and free of all stain. He chose a humble virgin, from whom he might come forth, meek and humble of heart, to display a most necessary and salutary model of these virtues for all humankind. Thus he allowed a virgin to conceive, in whom he had earlier inspired a vow of virginity and required of her the merit of humility. Otherwise, how could the angel afterward pronounce her full of grace if she had the slightest good quality? which did not come from grace. Thus, she who was to conceive and bring forth the Holy of Holies must be sanctified physically, and so she received the gift of virginity that she might be sanctified spiritually. She received the gift of humility. The Virgin then, adorned like a queen with the jewels of virtue, shone with the glory of body and soul, and seen on high as radiantly beautiful. She so attracted the inhabitants of heaven that she moved the heart of the king with desire for her and brought down from above the heavenly message. Scripture says the angel was sent to a virgin, for she was truly virgin in body, virgin in mind, a virgin by her special calling, sanctified, as the apostle reminds us, in both mind and body. This came about by no unforeseen or accidental occurrence. She was chosen from eternity, foreknown and prepared by the Most High for himself, guarded by the angels prefigured by the patriarchs, and promised by the prophets. Hmm. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, the Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive, thankfully, the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, who after the creation of the world rested from all your works and sanctified a day of rest for all your creatures, grant that we, putting away all earthly anxieties, may be duly prepared for the service of your sanctuary and that our rest here upon earth may be a preparation for the eternal rest promised to your people in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, of your saving grace, you called Mary of Nazareth to be the mother of your only begotten Son. Inspire us by the same grace to follow her example of bearing God to the world. We pray through Jesus Christ, her Son, our Savior. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite your prayers and petitions at this time. You may pause pre-recorded morning prayer and um, offer your prayers silently or aloud wherever you are. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Thanks. Let us bless. Let us go forth in peace. Thanks be to God. The angel of the Lord announced unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. We beseech thee, O Lord, pour thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, announced by the message of an angel to the Virgin Mary, so by his cross and passion we may be brought unto the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Thank you, friends. I wish you a blessed Saturday, and thank you for participating in morning prayer. God's blessings to all of us. Goodbye. <laughs>